Hello and welcome to St. John the Palm Scene celebration of the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider for this Mass is Father Joe Schley. Our lector is, is Ernest Dench. Please join in praying our gathering song, 10,000 Reasons.
almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your goodness and love with sincerity of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants no long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, thy servant shall justify many, and their guilt shall be. Shall he be the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Been tested in every way, 
yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for our timely help. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Someone 
asked her with this large, growing congregation of nuns. They answered the question, what is your biggest problem, mother? And she answered, professionalism. They said, what do you mean? She went on to explain, I currently have five of my sisters who are away getting MD degrees. And much greater numbers of my sisters are away getting degrees as registered nurses, licensed practical nurses, masters of social work. And she says, I support them in their education and in the getting of the degrees and the skills that they acquire. But she said, a funny thing happens. When they come back after they've acquired the degree and the education, they seem very concerned about their titles. They're concerned about having their own office and even concerned about having parking privileges in the parking lot. And then Mother Teresa said, so what I do is I take all of their privileges away and I, I assign them for the next six months to work with the dying, to minister to the suffering. And she says, usually what happens is they come back to their vocation and they let go of those concerns about titles and recognition. They come back to having tender hearts for the sick and the dying. After about six months, she said, they remember that their real vocation is bringing the spirit of Christ to people who are suffering, and their professional skills come second. Now, Mother Teresa, when she told the story, was very careful to say, I don't think we should not, I, I, she went on to say, I don't think we should neglect being professional. She supported her sisters in their education and their training and their professional ambitions, but she said, and reminded them that their professional degrees and their skills were only valuable in the spiritual context of being servants to the needy. She was trying to remind them that to foster the presence of Christ means that we live each day in the spirit of that Lord who at the Last Supper knelt down on the floor and washed the feet of his disciples. That's our true identity as followers of Christ. Not a degree or letters at the end of our name or a special office or any perks or privileges that we get. You know, as I was thinking about that story and looking at today's gospel, I put to myself, well, it's a normal and human thing to expect some kind of respect or recognition for our accomplishments, it may seem appropriate to be given a title or a privilege or a perk, as we call it, because we may have done something very special to deserve it. A pat on the back or a word of affirmation can feel very good. It can be very encouraging. But today's gospel tells us that those things Recognition, rewards, titles, must never be the basis of our lives in following Christ. Nor should those things be the motivation for reaching out to the needs of other people. To find real fulfillment and to be disciples of Jesus means that it is necessary to turn away from my own needs and from my need of recognition or reward. We must go beyond glorifying ourselves and ultimately leave behind those natural desires we have to be acknowledged or appreciated. For Jesus, the real basis of our lives as his followers is simply to live for others without the goal of being rewarded. 
Jesus is saying in today's gospel, the very act of loving another person and providing for others and putting their needs before my own is reward in itself. The two disciples of today's gospel, James and John, didn't get that. They didn't seem to understand that. They asked Jesus for a privilege. Look at the story in the gospel today. When the Lord comes into your king, his kingdom, James and John ask to sit one at your right and the other at your left at the throne of glory. They wanted the trophy. They wanted the recognition, the reward, the glory. But they didn't seem to realize that the way to get there was to take up the cross of unselfish love for others, which Jesus refers to in today's gospel as the cup of suffering. When they ask for this acknowledgement and reward and glory, he says, can you drink of the cup that I'm going to drink? He's referring to the cross. The message is that to take up our own crosses by helping others, by putting others first, is the most authentic kind of love. More than authentic, it's the kind of love that leads to true greatness, true glory. And he says it right there in today's gospel. These are his words. Whoever wishes to be great among you must become a servant. Whoever wishes to be the first among you must become a slave of all. It's a healthy message, I think, a healthy reminder to us of why we engage in ministry. And by ministry, I mean every Christian in the world is called to minister to the needs of others. I think a, a great example of this gospel is our Holy Father. I mean, what more exalted position in the world could there be than to be the Pope? And yet, we have a Pope who puts aside many of the ordained trappings that have been associated with his office, the trophies, if you will, that have been traditionally associated with being Pope. We, we have a, a Holy Father who carries his own bag and who chooses not to live in the, the grand glory of the papal apartments. Instead, he lives in a, a residence in the Vatican with other people who, who work in ministry. We have a Pope who constantly talks about putting the needs of the poor first. We have a Pope who lives on the mercy and forgiveness of Christ, as he's always saying, and tries to share that with others. We have a Pope who preaches a God of compassion. We have a Pope who had public showers installed in the Vatican so that the homeless could clean themselves. Pope Francis embodies in so many ways the message of today's gospel, the kind of life and love that Jesus speaks about. The humility of the Holy Father has endeared him to so many millions of people. I constantly hear you, you probably see in the news as well, there are so many people, and not necessarily Catholics, not necessarily Christians, who see him as such a symbol of hope on how we ought to live. Is that because they sense in Francis that he's on the right path? that so many people love him because they instinctively know that that kind of humility and putting the poor first is the way to peace in this world. For people to lie in with Francis because they see today's gospel message of service being so realistically, genuinely, authentically lived out. I would just say, as we've heard this gospel today, about what real love is meant to do for us, how we are identified as followers of Christ insofar as we serve others. 
May that same word help us to promote the power and the greatness of his kingdom by rising to the daily challenge that we all have. The daily challenge of being a servant to others. Putting ourselves last so that we can put others first. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence and trust, let us now ask God to provide for the needs of the whole human family. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church leaders, may the voice of the Holy Spirit be their guide as they lead the faithful, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all civic leaders, may God grant each of them a heart of humility and deep concern for the people they have been elected to serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, to recognize that the greatest glory of a Christian is to be of service to those in need, and that the cause of sacrificing for others is a privilege and our greatest reward. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially Guillermo Felix, Frank Hitler, Dolores Dinesh Tomish, and for all who are ill, from the coronavirus and any kind of chronic illness or addiction, and for the sick whose names we now mention aloud. That they may receive strength and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in, on, in the medical profession, for those who care for the sick, for all those working for the distribution of the vaccines, that their efforts result in a greater health for all people who pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Neil Porter, and for all the deceased whose names we now mention aloud. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the people of our parish and every parish, who we remember in a special way at this Mass today, and for the intentions that are unspoken within our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, our salvation comes from you alone. Hear the prayers we offer today. 
in the hope and confidence of Christ our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Before he was to suffer, 
On the very night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He gave the thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith at 
informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And this is your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen.
Now, O Lord, we pray that as we benefit from taking part in this heavenly Eucharist, we may be helped by what you give us in this present age and be prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we conclude, I just want to thank so many people who came to our parish on Tuesday to donate a pint of blood in our latest blood drive. It was marvelously successful, and uh, all of you should be thanked over and over again in these times when the health of the whole human family is a great concern and a source of anxiety, and our health system is working overtime to reach out to the, the sick. Those of you who give a pint of blood are committing a tremendous act of love for the human family, and I, I thank you for being here and doing that this past week. Let us continue to pray for the health of the whole human family, that God will bring us health and peace, and more and more people will um, be concerned about their neighbor, especially in these times when love of neighbor is really our road to peace and the way through the darkness that we experience in our world today. People who reach out to each other are sources of light and hope for all of us. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God always bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to glorify the Lord by the ways that we love one another. Thanks be to God.